Owen. How was your ride this evening? Oh, it was perfect, Leva. You know how Gus and I like to get out on the trails, have a good time, so this afternoon we decided to ride up Ponyo Canyon, see what was going on up at the Phil Turn Rocky Mountain Scout Camp. So what was going on? It was great. There was a lot of good stuff going on. I saw a group of boys that were learning how to cook over an open campfire. I saw another group of boys that were learning how to lash a load on a pack horse to get ready for their trip. I met boys from as far away as Pennsylvania and New Jersey. They had ridden an old school bus out here from home. It took them days to get here. Some of them even had their dad's old cowboy hats and they were wearing them. You know, it made me think a little bit back to those times when Wyatt and I had our great adventure. You still think often about your brother Wyatt, don't you? I do. I think about him every day. But you know, I think he would be just as happy as I am about what's going on here at the scout camp, and about all the learning that's taking place, and how, about all the opportunities that those boys are getting to learn new skills and have just a great, great time of fun. So how did you spend your afternoon here? Oh, writing some letters, reading, working on the details for the new house in California, remembering what our life in Tulsa was like, and our summers out here in New Mexico. Are you sure you still want to sell the ranch before we move to California? Yes, yes, I'm sure. You know how restless I get when we stay in one place too long, so I don't want to do that. But I know you love that house, Phil. But when we gave it to the Southwestern Art Association, I think that was the right decision. Just think about how many people now have had the opportunity to enjoy our house, to see the art, and to have a great day. It's only been not even two years yet since that happened. It was very hard to give up. I love that house. I know you did. But it was the right thing for us to do, eh? We have worked hard all our lives and been successful and blessed. But now, sharing what we have with others brings us a different kind of happiness. Well, that's true. I was just thinking, remember when Will Rogers visited, he said he had been to Buckingham Palace, and our house was a great comparison to theirs. It didn't have anything on us, on, on them, and he was right. He was very right. But you know what I always say, Viva? Nothing in this world is permanent but change. By the way, you left your little book of epigrams on the dresser this afternoon. I've been looking through it. What you just said about change, being the only thing permanent, was one of the things you wrote in your book. And there was another one that applies to this situation. Let me see. What was that? Real philanthropy consists of helping others outside our own family circle from whom no thanks is expected or required. I know you believe that just as much as I do, Ava. I do, Wade. You were always generous, even before you had anything. It was one of the things that made me love you when we were first courting back in Knoxville those many years ago. You know, I wasn't really sure we were going to be able to get married. And that was because of your father. You know, he said that I was a, quote, young upstart, and I was not good enough for you. He told me I was going to make a lot of mistakes in life. You know what I told him? The man that doesn't make any mistakes doesn't make much of anything. Well, later my father said that he always knew you had it in you to be successful, and eventually it all worked out. I seem to recall another quote from your notes about that. Let me see. Nothing worthwhile was ever accomplished without the will to start, the enthusiasm to continue, and regardless of temporary obstacles, the persistence to com complete. Well, I definitely had to persist to get you, but that's a good one. <laughs> Let me see the book just a minute. You know, I was thinking while we were writing out there about our talk about giving some more to the Boy Scouts, and I still think that's a that's a great thing to do. And I've been working on the letter to write to the Boy Scouts to, to make that offer, to finalize it. You know, the surveyor told me the other day, 
that it looks like it's going to be about 91,000 acres, the part of the ranch that, that we're going to give to the scouts. And when you put that with the 36,000 acres that we gave before, that's going to be 127,000 acres that will be part of the scout camp. Mr. Shuck was concerned that, uh, that the Boy Scouts would not be able to maintain all that property. But with the leases from the Phil Tower in Tulsa, that will take care of the operating expenses. And then, of course, the cash that we're going to give them to fund scholarships for boys that might not otherwise be able to attend. But let me read you what I'm going to put in the letter and see what you think about that. Here's what I've written so far. I'm impressed with the responsibility of this generation to adequately train its youth physically, mentally, and morally to meet the problems they must face in the future. In my opinion, there is nothing more valuable to this generation than the enlargement of the scouting program, which develops self-reliance and dependability. It always has been my belief that the best contribution to that kind of development is by living close to nature and through learning to live in the great out of doors. And Philmont will perpetuate American idealism and patriotism among boys from all parts of America. How's that sound? I like what you said, Wait. No changes needed in my view, but it seems that everywhere I get comfortable, every time I get comfortable in our one of our homes, you decide. Well, give it to somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we put conditions when we gave Philbrook to the Southwestern Art Association, we put some conditions on that gift. And we've got some conditions that are going to be on this gift, too. First, Philmont has to stay a working ranch. That's very important to me. Second, my old horse Gus gets to roam free for the rest of his life out there in those wonderful mountains until he's gone. And then third, of course, we can come back as our family and visit anytime we want. And when we do, we get to stay right here in the building. So those conditions are good, don't you think? I think so. It's good that at least you thought about the rest of the family after you made sure the ranch hands and Gus were taken care of. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So what if the Boy Scouts offering you that Silver Buffalo Award again? You know you turned it down the first time. Well, I did, and I'll do that again. I'll do that again. Uh, you know, I've turned down lots of medals and cups and those sorts of things. I think it's dangerous, a dangerous thing when compliments mean so much to a man. And he starts doing things just for the recognition that he's going to get rather than for the really right reason. But that's why I love you so much, Peter, because you agree with all those things and you know we've done all this together, all of us. And you know, that makes me think there's one other little saying that's here in the book. And I just noticed that as I was turning over. It's probably one of the shortest, but I think it's one of the best that's in there. And you know what it is. The only things we keep permanently are those we give away. 